The establishment of the mandate was one of the hallmarks of our movement for equality for LGBTQ plus people around the world. It sends a message that at a global level, there is consensus that LGBTQ plus rights are human rights and that working to coming together as a global community to resolve the issues of violence and discrimination that our community faces is one of the priorities of the international community. So many people around the world are being discriminated because of their sexual, sexual orientation and gender identity. And that's the reason why we continue to push that this mandate continues. From the very start, the push for mandate for us was necessary. One, to increase visibility. Two, to ensure that our voices are heard at that level. And so a renewal of this mandate at this time, more than ever, where we are seeing rollback in many policies, is much needed and much necessary. I think what this mandate does is uniquely elevates those voices that are not being heard and often being crowded out by those making so much more noise. El mandato representa dos cosas para las poblaciones globales LGBTI. La primera es, por supuesto, la visibilidad que tenemos eh, a nivel de Naciones Unidas de poder interactuar desde de nuestras necesidades, pero también tener un mecanismo que responda a las poblaciones de manera directa y que se pueda articular con otros mecanismos de la, de la, de, del sistema de Naciones Unidas para responder a cosas muy específicas, lo que me llega al segundo punto de la, de la importancia, que es la capacidad de la interseccionalidad the creation of the mandate like the ISOGIS mandate um, is um, important in enabling us to forge solidarity within and beyond our communities so that we could build broad intersectional movements uh, towards justice and equality. There is a clear point of contact you can turn to uh, when it comes to your work with the UN. Um, to have a mandate which has the support of governments behind it saying this matters is so crucial and it must continue. Sadly, there are those out there who would want to take that away. Um, and so the fight must continue to hold on to this mandate. La renovación del mandato del experto independiente es un proceso crucial para el movimiento de derechos humanos y particularmente para el movimiento LGBTI+, porque está más que probado que la experiencia de estos años nos ha permitido, por un lado, Eh, fortalecer la incidencia política en cada uno de nuestros países y por otro lado también ha fortalecido el sistema internacional de derechos humanos. After his country visit, we received so many uh, contacts from our go governments who became more open to cooperate with us. So I think it is very crucial to push for uh, this mandate to be uh, there for the next years. Y creo que hay que continuar y hay que buscar que haya una vigencia del trabajo en Naciones Unidas específico en, en la recopilación de información sobre las experiencias de personas LGTB. I think the mandate on on SOGI is very important because it creates a reference uh, externally and internally for everyone that is working on uh, SOGI related uh, topics. I think it's really important for the UN to have a perspective, not only perspective, but have really clear guidelines and an action plan around violence. Um, violence in the it extends to the workplace, it extends to communities. We don't have a true perspective, um, a true community perspective, unless we're learning about the impacts of violence and then what are the ways that we're going to work together to address them. We are not free and we are not equal. I've said many times, this is where humanity is at, and this is where we are. And we're not asking for anything new. All we want is to elevate our humanity so it is the same with everyone else. And it is absolutely crucial that the United Nations continue this work. They must continue the work of the mandate of the independent experts on SOGI.